Hi everybody, we're coming at you today with our July wrap up. So just to preface, these are not the books that we read during Booktubeathon, but these are the books that we read during the rest of July that we wanted to share with you. All right, to the books. So the first book I'm gonna talk about today is The Girl From Everywhere by Heidi Heilig. I have been meaning to read this book literally since it came out. This is actually an arc. Um, I need to get my own finished copy, but it was so good and I'm so glad that I finally read it. In this book, we follow a girl named Nyx who lives on her father's ship, but there's more to this ship than meets the eye. Not only can it physically sail the seven seas, but with the right map, this ship can actually sail through time and through myth and legend. Now, if that doesn't sound intriguing to you, I don't know what will, because this book was awesome. It was super fast paced and it really kept me turning the pages. It has some pretty swoon-worthy romance in here as well, which is always fun to see. And yeah, I just had a really good time reading it and I'm super excited to pick up the sequel soon. So the first book that I wanna talk about is The Bells by Danielle Clayton. So this book is really interesting in that it's kind of a really cool mix of fantasy and dystopian. In this world, the citizens are born um, kind of like with gray ashen skin and red eyes, but then there's always this generation of girls who are born fully colored, they're beautiful, and they are called the Bells. Now, the Bells have a very unique power in that they can make other people beautiful. They can change their appearance in a whole bunch of different ways. They can even like make them more beautiful in terms of like their personality. The catch with this is that these changes don't last, they will go back to how they used to look before. So people are constantly paying to have more and more beauty procedures done to them because their biggest fear is going back to the way that they looked when they were born. So another thing that happens with the Bells is when they come of age at 16, there is a ceremony where their fate is decided on where they will be placed throughout the kingdom and where they will work and do their procedures. There's like a lot of different tea houses and things like that, but then the most coveted position is working for the royal family in the castle. The writing in this book took me a little while to get used to. It's very, very descriptive and somewhat flowery, um, but once I kind of got used to that, the story just took off and it was very different from what I was expecting. There's a lot that goes on behind the scenes of this world and it's almost like a seedy underbelly to the city and it was just fascinating to read about. And our main character just gets wrapped up into so much political intrigue and things like that, which just kept me turning pages all the way to the very end. So while it is a pretty hefty book, I think it's over 500 pages, I read it in just a couple days because I couldn't put it down. Um, this book comes out in February of next year and I highly recommend it. The first book on my list is Snow and Rose by Emily Winfield Martin. This is a reimagining of the fairy tale Snow White and Rose Red. This is the story of two sisters, Snow and Rose, who have to move with their mother to a tiny little house in the woods after their father mysteriously goes missing. As the two sisters start exploring deeper and deeper into their new surroundings, they encounter all sorts of mysterious creatures and enchanted things in the woods, which have a bit of a dark twist to them. As the tagline on the back of the book says, Snow and Rose didn't know they were living in a fairy tale. People never do. The book is also full of stunning full color illustrations by Martin that just bring the story to life and you really feel like you're right in the woods with them. This book comes out on October 10th. Next up, I have The Walled City by Ryan Groudon. This is yet another book that I've been meaning to read for years and I finally got around to it because I'm getting through that TVR pile of mine and it was excellent as well. This book is inspired by the actual walled city in China, which is a real place and very fascinating and I recommend you look it up because it's quite intriguing. The tagline of this book is run fast, trust no one, and always carry a knife and that pretty much sums up the atmosphere of this one. In this book we follow three points of view. We have Dai, Mei Yi, and Jin and each point of view is very different but equally fascinating. The city, which is called Hacknam, is kind of a character in of itself. Um, once you cross the border of the city, it's almost like entering a different world. Kind of the main plot of this book is you're following Jin's story and her efforts to find her sister in this crazy city. I really enjoyed every second of this book and there are definitely some nail-biting moments in here and for a standalone novel, it wrapped up the story really well. If you're interested in reading some Ryan Groudon, I definitely recommend picking up this one. And another book I wanna talk about is Ink by Alice Broadway. Now I'm halfway through this right now, but I will be finishing it very soon and I can already tell that it's gonna be a new favorite of mine. I just think the concept of this this book is so interesting. So in this society, um, every big monumental thing that happens in a person's life is tattooed on their skin. So good things as well as bad things. So the people in this world go all throughout their life getting tattoos for different reasons and when a person dies, 
this sounds kind of gruesome, but they literally remove the skin from the person and they make a book out of it for the family members to always have as a keepsake. And then if your tattoos and your book tell a decent story and show that you are a good person, your soul will then be released and you won't go to hell. At the beginning of the book, our main character's father passes away and it kind of takes you through the process of them making his book and um, kind of waiting to hear if his soul will be going up to heaven. Now, our main character has always known her father to be a really good person and she loved him very much. So when she finds out that hidden along his scalp is a mark only reserved for the worst of criminals. She's deeply confused and she goes on a quest to figure out why this happened, why her father was marked with this tattoo and what she can do to kind of reclaim his reputation. So that's as far as I've gotten and I don't want to spoil anything further. Um, I'm not sure how it's going to play out but I'm really excited to keep reading. I really love the world that the author has built around this um, concept of tattooing everybody's stories on their skin. It's really well thought out, um, like there's even like, they talk about um, going to school for different positions, like if you're going to be the inker or if you're going to be the person that removes the skin and like things like that. And it's just a really, really cool idea and I'm excited to finish it. This book comes out in January of 2018. The next one on my list is Max Tilt, Fire the Depths. This is the first of a new trilogy by the best-selling author Peter Lorangis, who has brought us all sorts of epic adventures in the past. This book follows 12-year-old Max, who, while digging through his attic with his cousin Alex, discovers an unpublished manuscript by their great-great-great-grandfather, Jules Verne. Jules Verne, as we all know, is the explorer and author of epic adventures at like uh, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. This new manuscript is called The Lost Treasures, and it starts them on a quest to find, you guessed it, Jules Verne's lost treasure. To add to the already high stakes, Max's mom is quite sick and their house is about to be sold if they can't pay the bank. Plus, there is a crazed billionaire who is also in search of the treasure. This is an epic adventure that takes them all over the world. They stow away on a cruise ship and they find their way as a crew onto a submarine. They go to the Arctic Circle. They go to all sorts of crazy places real and imagined that you just you will be on the edge of your seat. This book comes out on October 3rd. Finally I have Things I'm Seeing Without You by Peter Bognani. Now this is a contemporary novel that's coming out this September and I don't read a lot of contemporary so I wasn't sure I was going to love it but this book just swept me off my feet. In this book we follow Tess Fowler who has recently learned that her boyfriend has committed suicide. Now obviously this sounds like a very sad premise for a book and of course there is that um, but it's, the book is actually really, really funny, which I was not expecting when I got, went into it. After learning of his death, Tess runs away from her boarding school to go live with her kind of eccentric father who runs a funeral business for um, burying animals, basically. This book just had so much heart and it had so many laugh out loud moments, which I really was not expecting when I went into it. You really get to explore Tess's journey through grief and coming to realize that maybe she didn't know Jonah as well as she thought she did. This cover is also stunning and I'm really looking forward to getting a finished copy when it comes out in September. And my favorite book that I read this month is Heart of Iron by Ashley Poston. Now I will admit I am not a big sci-fi reader but I absolutely love this book. It's being pitched as like a mix of Anastasia and Firefly and I think that is extremely accurate. So if you like either of those stories, then this is going to be right up your alley. The story really begins with um, our two main characters. One is an orphan kind of lawbreaker and the other is a member of like the royal court and they are both fighting to gain coordinates to a ship that contains answers that both of them are seeking. That's really just like the tip of the iceberg with what this book is about but I don't really want to spoil anything because you really have to read it for yourself. Now what I loved about this book the most are the characters. I haven't felt this way about a cast of characters since reading the Lunar Chronicles and it just felt so nice to have like not just one or two characters that you connect with but like a whole wide array. Quite a lot of the story takes place on a spaceship, um, kind of just dealing with the interactions between all the characters and it was also super funny which I really enjoyed. The characters are all extremely diverse in many different ways. There's even like an android which was super super fun and yeah it was just like a really great adventure story in space and I can't wait for more people to read it. This book doesn't come out until February of next year but you should definitely add it to your TBRs. The next book on my list is March Book One by John Lewis, Andrew Aiden, and Nate Powell. This is the first of a graphic novel trilogy that chronicles the life of Congressman John Lewis and his involvement in the American Civil Rights Movement. 
The book flashes back and forth between Lewis's youth in the American South and the morning of January 20th, 2009, which is the inauguration of President Barack Obama. We learn about Lewis's childhood and how he became a preacher at the very young age of 15, and then how he goes on to actually meet Martin Luther King Jr. and get uh, quite involved with him. He ends up working right alongside him during the Civil Rights Movement. We learn more about that relationship in the following two books, but in this one we learn a lot about um, his early college years and the process of learning as a group what it means to um, be peaceful protesters and all the training that goes into that. Um, and it's just this really amazing first-hand account, um, yet again, of a movement that I didn't know a ton about the details of, but was very curious to know more. But graphic novels are such an approachable way to get into something that you, you may find overwhelming. I cannot wait to read parts two and three. I have them both on hold at the library and may just end up buying before then. But uh, this is a, a must read and a very important movement that is still completely relevant today. All right guys, so those were just a few of the books that we read in the month of July and really enjoyed. We would always love to hear what you've been reading this summer, so leave a comment below. As per usual, like this video and subscribe to our channel. Happy reading and thanks for being awesome. Bye!